Hello and welcome to part 2 of my Final Fantasy XIV Deep Dungeon Guide for New Players. My name is TSDS and in this video I'll explain how to unlock the Palace of the Dead and how queuing and saving runs work. So, now you have a basic understanding of what it is, let's unlock it. To do so, you'll need to be at least level 17 on one Disciple of War or Magic class and have completed the main story quest Into a Copper Hell. If you've completed the normal Copperbell Mines dungeon, then you've done this already. From here, make your way to New Gridania and head down to the inn. Inside to the right, you'll find this little potato sitting on a box. Above his head should be this blue quest icon. Of course, it's not showing for me because I've done it already. Talk to him and take his quest, the house that Death built. This quest basically just involves you going to the South Shroud and talking with a few people, and before you know it, you'll be able to enter the Palace of the Dead. Ooh. So how do you do it then? Well, head to Quarry Mill in the South Shroud and look for the large crowd of people. The only way to enter the palace is by speaking to the Wood Whaler Expeditionary Captain a lot of people will be looking at. Talking to him will allow you to see your current gear levels and let you select one of five commands. Selecting Enter the Palace of the Dead will open up the save slot window. As mentioned previously, the game allows you to save two trips into the palace. If you've already cleared some floors and gone back to the surface after the boss, it's here you'll find your currently progressed save, which you can select to continue which automatically puts you in the queue. Selecting an empty slot progresses to the next stage where you can choose between going in with a fixed party or a matched one. A fixed party means the only people going in will be the people in your group right now. This also allows you to go in solo, but soloing is a whole other kettle of fish. A fixed party has its own type of save file and can only be continued when your group is back together. On the other hand, selecting a matched party will put you and anyone else in your current party with some random people so that your total group number is 4. If you want to go in with a friend but want a full group, party up and select this option. Just ensure your friend has an empty save slot ready or hasn't deleted their own save of your earlier run if you're continuing. At the start, you'll only be able to enter from floor 1, but once you've cleared the 50th floor, you'll permanently be given the option to enter from the 51st floor as well. This brings us on to the second command in the list and resetting your progress. Selecting this will allow you to delete a saved run. You'll get a little pop-up asking you if you're sure, so just tick the box confirming you know what you're doing and hit yes. Blammo, save deleted. If you're wanting to spam run floors 1 to 10, this is what you'll need to do. Though why you might want to spam those floors will be covered in my tips and tricks video later on. Deleting saves isn't really that big of a deal because it only deletes the floor progress you've made and the pomoders you've collected. The upgrades to your weapon and armour, along with any treasures you've found, are for keeps. The third option, Disband Your Fixed Party, will allow you to select a fixed party save and convert it into a normal matched party save. This means if you've made it to floor 30 with Kevin and Tony, but they're never online and you don't want to start from floor 1 again, you can use this to wipe their existence off the file. This will allow you to continue the file with the matchmaking system filling the empty slots. This irreversibly changes this specific file, but as a new player, it's very unlikely you'll be doing fixed parties anyway. The fourth command, View Your Scores, does what you might expect. Scores are only obtained when using a fixed party and are just for bragging rights. They're determined by a number of factors, such as how deep you got and how many enemies you slew. And now we reach the final option, Learn About the Palace of the Dead. This will let you read up on how various things work, but you're here watching this video, so you probably won't need this one. And that brings us to the end of part 2. In part 3, I'll explain what to actually do when you're inside. Thank you for watching.